This week for Tactical Tuesday, we are excited to talk to you about the new Huxworks Flow 762 suppressor. So as mentioned at the beginning of the video, this week for Tactical Tuesday, we are going to talk about the new Huxworks Flow 762 suppressor. Today I am here with Chris, my coworker, who is a huge suppressor fanatic, and he knows probably more about the individual specs of each suppressor that we offer here at the shop. Plus he's the guy who helps you get your paperwork submitted correctly. Real quick disclaimer guys, Hunter and I, we're not scientists, we're not engineers. We're just a couple of dudes that like suppressors and like shooting guns. Um, so take kind of everything we say with a little bit of a grain of salt because this is more just our first impressions and our really pretty subjective opinions on the suppressor. If you do want actual objective data, check out Pew Science, which we'll uh, tag down in the comments below. So let's just start off with the specs real quick about this can. 6.7 inches in length, about 1.8 inches in diameter, and total system weight, including the muzzle brake, is around uh, 15 ounces. Uh, the really cool thing about this suppressor, as well as uh, the Flow 556K, is that it's 3D printed. Those of you who aren't familiar with 3D printing, it's definitely the future of suppressors, in my opinion. It utilizes a process called DMLS, which imagine basically just a big bed of powdered metal with a high voltage laser that comes around and pretty much micro welds every bit of that powder together until you get your desired shape. It makes for a stronger, lighter, suppressor but it also allows for a lot more different and complicated geometries that aren't attainable through traditional machining processes so you're able to get really good performance out of suppressors like this it's pretty crazy how far the suppressor technology has come I mean going from just your traditional baffle stacks that are wall welded together uh, like Chris said the ability to get far more complicated and intricate uh, internals for these suppressors is very impressive and really is changing the game mm -hmm. for the suppressor technology. Absolutely. Uh, we were able to test this suppressor out on a few different platforms. Uh, we got to put it on a SCAR 17S, a LMT Mars H, an LWRC 16 inch AR-15, and then some Rifle Dynamics 11.5 AK platform. And what we found was that Without jumping the gun and giving too much away, across the board, it was a pretty comfortable can. Yeah, it was surprising. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more in detail here, but we were pretty pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To start off with, we shot it on two very similar SCAR 17s. One was equipped with the Dead Air Sam NS, and then one was equipped with the Flow 762 Ti. Uh, with the Flow 762 Ti, it was incredibly comfortable for both the shooter and all the bystanders. Definitely an improvement over. Uh, standard baffle stack such as the Sam NS. Uh, but what we really noticed was felt recoil was considerably different between the two of them as well as back pressure. Uh, the felt recoil was considerably less with the SCAR equipped with the Flow 7.62 Ti uh, compared to the one equipped with the Sam N and also the ejection pattern was a lot less violent um, compared to the SCAR 17 which mind you was highly tuned by the guys up at Trajectory Arms to shoot the Sam NS. So for a tuned SCAR to still not have as much, or to have more back pressure and more felt recoil than this, is still very impressive. And I can say, as the cameraman, when I was actually out there filming those scars, you know, I was kind of all over different positions around trying to get different angles. Uh, so hopefully we can kind of get a little bit better representation of as far as the sound goes. I can honestly say that being next to this suppressor was very comfortable. It was not at all uncomfortable to be near as far as the sound and concussion goes. And like Chris said, it was very obvious the ejection pattern difference between the two scars. Mm -hmm. Yes, the one is a little bit more tuned for the Sandman, but that is almost skewing the scales in its favor, where the other one had basically no tuning done to it and just had the flow on there. And it was a considerably softer ejection pattern and a much more consistent ejection pattern. So to the credit of the Flow 762, it really was self-regulating quite well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And as mentioned before, the other big platform that we got to test the Flow 762 on was the Rifle Dynamics RD700. It was very quickly noticeable how much more tame that platform was when running the Flow 762. Traditionally, AKs have a pretty extreme ejection pattern anyway, but it gets even more so when you put a suppressor on the front end. And what's wild about the Rifle Dynamics RD700 platform 
is that those are specifically tuned to run on a Sandman. Mm -hmm. uh, they come from the factory, designed for that. That's kind of the ideal suppressor for that platform. But that being said, if you watch the ejection pattern on one of those AKs, it's, without exaggeration, like a 15-foot throw. Yeah, those, it's, those, it's throwing it out to space. Like, yeah, you may be you know, thinking you're safe back behind the firing line, but you could still be getting hit with those shell casings. So it's pretty wild. And that is with a platform that is specifically tuned for the Sandman. Now, when we threw the Flow 762 on there, that ejection pattern shortened up significantly. In fact, it very much resembled that of a non-suppressed AK, mm -hmm. which, again, the benefit of going to something like this is you're getting far less back pressure, putting far less wear and tear on the gun, and you really don't have to do any really tuning on the gun itself. You can just kind of plug and play this suppressor on the front end of the AK and run it. So if you're an AK guy, this is definitely a suppressor you should be looking into. It's, it's going to be a tough one to beat. Yeah, absolutely. The other suppressor that we were very interested in comparing the Flow 762 against was the Flow 556, also made by Huxworks. And what we were very pleasantly surprised to see was how good it sounded when compared to a dedicated 556 suppressor. Now on the shooter side of things, they sounded almost identical. It was very challenging to really tell much of a difference. But where it really stood out was to the bystander standing by listening to the, each suppressor. The Flow 762 sounded significantly better and it honestly sounded quite a bit quieter mm -hmm. to those around the shooter. Again, to the shooter, not a huge difference, but it, that can make a, a fairly big difference if you're trying to keep everything as quiet as possible. Now, as obviously you can tell, there is a fairly significant size difference between the two. So if you're trying to keep things as short, as compact as possible, the Flow 556 may still be the better option for you because of how compact it is in comparison to the 762. But maybe if you're looking for something that's kind of a one and done suppressor, the 762 suppressor is going to be a very good option for you. Absolutely. The other 5.56 suppressor that we compared the Flow 7.62 against was the Otter Creek Labs Polonium. Uh, so that way there we can get a uh, more traditional baffle style suppressor to compare it to. The Polonium is definitely quieter than both of them. Uh, it's no surprise, really, if you pay attention to Pew Science. However, it is considerably higher back pressure than both of them. Um, so it is something that if you plan on one, running one of these, it requires a whole lot of tuning to better suit the gun and also you the shooter, uh, which is not something you can say about these two suppressors. Um, they're pretty much plug and play. Yeah, and Chris's gun, the one that we were running the polonium on, is insanely well tuned. It's probably one of the smoothest operating AR-15s I've ever shot. He spent a lot of time getting that really well dialed in. And if that's you know the quest that you're willing to take, you can end up with a quieter can that route. But it takes some considerable research and you know some fine tuning as far as you know buying, finding and obtaining and installing the right springs and weights as far as your buffer goes. So if you're not really into all of that, as much as you know, kind of we are here at the shop, the flow series of suppressors may be, again, the better option for you because like Chris said, it is arguably one of the best plug-in-play suppressors. You stick it on your gun and you forget about it. You don't need to do any modifications to the firearm itself. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the only thing that we didn't get to test with the Flow 762 was its flash signature. We just kind of ran out of time out at the range. We weren't able to really spend that time under night vision testing to see what it looks like. But that being said, Huxworks does recommend at least a 200 round break-in period with these suppressors. And what that's doing is helping to eliminate any of that residual kind of 3D printing material when these are being constructed. After about 200 rounds, the flash reduction does get significantly better, at least in the case of the 556 mm -hmm. that I've seen. So I believe that the 7.62 is going to be very similar to that, but we will be doing some follow-up testing on that just to kind of confirm. The last platform we tested it on was a uh, Bergara uh, 6.5 Creedmoor bolt action rifle, which sounds pretty good uh, for being a flow through suppressor. It was pretty comparable to the Dead Air Nomad series, which lots of you may be familiar with that. It's a pretty good sounding can, although 
still being fairly compact. And it performed very similar to the Dead Air Nomad series for sure. Full disclosure, guys, I used to be pretty anti-flow through suppressor on bolt guns. I always thought that the added performance that you get out of a traditional baffle style can, such as like a Thunder Beast Ultra 9 or an Otter Creek Labs Hydrogen L, was well worth the extra price and the extra wait time for a second suppressor over a flow through because they just sound that much better on bolt guns. But this can has definitely changed my mind about that and to the point where I would feel pretty confident recommending this to someone who wants to put it on their gas guns but also wants to suppress their bolt guns as well it just sounds that good and i agree with what chris just said it was very surprising how versatile this can was especially over kind of the wider variety of platforms that we put it on you know, whether it was your very common ar-15 all the way to a scar which is are traditionally a little bit more challenging to suppress and then it even sounded really good on the bolt gun um, and like chris said i often would tell people hey if you're going to set up a suppressor for a bolt gun whether it's for hunting or for long range shooting in many ways you were better off getting a dedicated suppressor to that platform because of the added benefits such as the weight reduction and the sound reduction. Uh, but this suppressor, being that it is a fairly lightweight suppressor and also sounds really good on the bolt gun, if you're looking for kind of a one and done suppressor where you're trying to suppress as many platforms as possible, this very well may be the suppressor to get. Um, it sounded great on your 5.56 cartridges all the way up to the 6.5 Creedmoor and 308s that we were putting through it. It was a very versatile and very useful suppressor. And I think that it's going to find a home with a lot of people because of its very broad versatility. Like Chris was saying, there still may be some suppressors out there that are gonna be better suited for specific individual tasks, such as you know, flash suppression under night vision or, you know, the bolt gun specific suppressors or maybe uh, the real hard, hard use machine gun cans. So maybe it doesn't achieve any of those features as well as those individual cans. But what it will do is allow the common person to suppress majority of most guys complete collection of firearms. Yeah. And guys, I also have a little bit of a confession to make. Honestly, for the longest time, I just wasn't a fan of the Huxworks suppressors up until the Flow 556. While I agree that the older style suppressors that they were offering did exactly what were advertised by keeping a low back pressure, I just wasn't that stoked on the performance of the older style suppressors that they were doing. But to Huxworks' credit, they are one of those companies that has continued to innovate and really change things up and to adapt and create better and better products. And this generation of suppressor has completely changed my mind on these suppressors as a whole. Uh, they do perform very well, in my opinion. I think that they are a, a very solid can. And if you're in the market to get a, your first suppressor or any suppressor, this is definitely gonna be one that you should be looking into getting. In conclusion, guys, we're super happy about this suppressor and we're very excited to have it here in the store and available to you, the customer. But like I said in the beginning of this video, we're not scientists or engineers. So take everything we said with a grain of salt. And if you wanna learn more about this suppressor, check out our website or also check out pewscience.com as well. So guys, as always, continue to train hard, train smart, and until next week, God bless you.